Welcome to KJV Cafe. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen. Each episode of the cafe is dedicated to studying the Bible verse by verse from Genesis through Revelation. Your host here at the cafe is Bible teacher Clark Covington. Looks like the coffee is hot and ready, so let's get started. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the cafe. Another blessed day here at the cafe. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Clark Covington. We are just here at the cafe today. Got a good cup of coffee here. Uh, Sun is shining outside. Amen. Uh, Birds are chirping. Lord has given us another day to praise him. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to praise God. And I really can say that today because we're looking at Genesis 6 which shows us a picture of both death and life, a picture of sin and the consequences of sin and also life and and grace and and, and the blessings that come from belief in God. And so in Genesis 6, we're going to spend some time in the eighth verse of Genesis 6, which is a very uh, familiar verse, if you would, a very familiar verse. And I'll read that and just, just completely on its own. And then we'll look at a little context, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So our verse today, Genesis six is Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's our verse. We're going to spend a few episodes looking at this grace that Noah found in the eyes of the Lord. And as we look at the past episodes, we've looked at a lot of what led up to this grace, because in order for grace to exist, you have to have some kind of failure fault issue where grace would be, would be given, right? Um, You can't uh, show grace if there is no one to show grace to, or no reason to show grace. Um, If I had a coworker and that coworker hit my car and uh, you know, they said, please don't be mad at me. I'm so sorry. I, I was looking at my phone, you know? And if I said, I'm not mad at you. I forgive you. It could have happened to me. You know, I've had some close calls. It's okay. You know, I'm showing grace to that coworker. I didn't do anything for for them to hit my car and they admitted they were at fault and I forgave them. I showed grace to that coworker, right? In order for that, you know, uh, situation to happen, you would have to have a need for grace. You'd have to have a car crash, if you will. And here we have humanity's car wreck in Genesis 6. And it came to pass as the first verse, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so we see here Genesis six, one through seven, seven God's number of completion, by the way, it's a complete picture of wickedness in the world. We see these sons of God who we don't exactly know who they are, but Clearly, they were taking the daughters of men, and that wasn't good. It was so bad and so evil at that time that in verse 3, God says, look, I'm not going to suffer man plus 120 years, which was news then because man had been living almost to 1,000 years, 969 years. So I'm no mathematician, but that's what, uh, 10, 15%, you know, uh, lifespan. So God's going to take away 85 or, you know, whatever it is, 80, 85% of man's life. Cause he's so sick of them. Uh, he's about to flood the earth. He's seeing wickedness. He's seen that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
And you have to understand, we're going to talk about this after the break, that this this wasn't just a few people. And we're going to get to that right after the break, that this was a very large group that was acting very bad to the point where God had no choice but to say, I've had enough. So stay tuned and we'll get to the numbers here, which are very fascinating, just as soon as we return from this break. You're listening to KJV Cafe. We encourage you to look us up on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now let's get back to some more in-depth Bible study. So to give context to this verse 8 that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, we first want to see number one, it says, but, but the word is so important. That word, but, but God, but God, right? So if it weren't for God, there would be so many things gone astray, we would have all been fallen into death, death's grips. Remember, sin caused death to enter the picture in the Garden of Eden, and we couldn't deliver ourselves from sin, thus we needed a Savior, thus grace personified, grace exemplified, Christ dying for our sins at Calvary, amen? But God, it was only from God. So, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So there's this but, which means like B-U-T as in all of this is horrible and God's going to have to deal with it because it's not going to get any better. But there's one that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for that. Thank God for God's grace. And at this time, as I mentioned before the break, This was, you know, when you read this, you look at in the Bible where you are, right? You're in Genesis 6, you're six chapters in, you're you're just a chapter away from uh, when, you know, you had Adam, uh, you know, Adam's line and you had the line of Seth, right? And so, uh, you know, I'm trying to find that verse in Genesis 5, uh, but you have, for example, uh, in Genesis 5, you have Adam's living 930 years in verse 5 of Genesis 5. So you, you have God's first creation, Adam, the firstborn man, the first creation of man, as we know him. And then we here we are, just one chapter later, and you might be thinking there's just a few dozen people on earth, or a few, or, or a few hundred, or maybe a few thousand. But that's what it pays to rightly divide, to study the word, to study what the Bible says. And thank God uh, for scholars, biblical scholars and creation scientists and so forth that help us with that study. And so I've got in front of me a table of dates. That's like a chart, right? Like a spreadsheet almost. A table of dates uh, done by Answers in Genesis uh, and it's on their website. If you could just search up a uh, timeline for the flood. And we see that the earth uh, was created around 4004 BC, as we understand it, as the Bible tells us. The flood was around 1656 years later. Okay. So you have, if you want to just think of this in really round numbers, you have roughly 4,000 Uh, BC is when the earth is created, then roughly 1500 or so years later, there's a flood, you know, 1656, you can say 1500, you can say 2000, roughly there. Then you have uh, 4,300 and some years or so until we get to modern day, okay? So 4,360, 70 years, somewhere there. So what you see here is you can kind of separate it into like quadrants. You can have when God created the earth, and you could have when the flood happened, right? And then you could say, how much time was that? Because we know that when God created the earth, he created Adam. And so we know that cre- we know that man's on earth. And we know how population has grown over modern times. And so without projecting any wild projections, because man lived a lot longer back then, we can see, generally speaking, uh, that there are today, as in 2024, roughly 8 billion people on earth, give or take. So today, you know, we have that and we have, um, you know, from the flood, from when God flooded the earth and had that one family on the earth again, we have roughly 4,400 years, give or take. Okay. Uh, you know, the time of the article was 4,359, but it's been, you know, maybe 10 years from the article. So we'll say 4,400 years or so. 
So what we see is in 2,000 years to the flood, uh, you, if you took half, right, of 8 billion, you'd have 4 billion in population, right? Uh, now, let's say you took a quarter uh, of that because it's been 4,000 years since the flood. So you just said, even though they live longer, I want to take instead of uh, the 8 billion divided by two, I want to take that and say, instead of 4 billion, I want to say it's 2 billion. Okay. Uh, because that might make sense, right? Uh, if we have 8 billion now, and again, I'm not a math person. I'm sure, I'm sure most people listening to this is like, where is this guy going? Bear with me. Okay. If we have 8 billion now, one quarter of that would be two, right? Two, four, six, eight. Amen. Okay. So maybe, just maybe, there was roughly 2 billion people on the earth when God flooded the earth. That's the point I'm getting at. It could have been way more than that. Yes, it could have been less, but it certainly wasn't like a few people, okay? So my country backwoods math, which I think I confuse myself in this equation, uh, still gets to billions of people. And all I did was stare at that Bible table of timeline looking at, okay, we see that, you know, uh, and again, you got BC, right, which is you're counting down and all, but we see roughly 1,656 years pass from creation to the flood. That means that gave those folks that much time to reproduce, and they lived a lot longer back then so that they could have many, many kids. Um, again, I'm in the country. And people in their 20s, is, you know, hey, they can have four, five, six, seven kids out here, okay? Uh can you imagine, you know, if you tack on, uh, instead, of, instead of living an average, you know, 75, 80 years, you tack on 10x to that. And so instead of having, say, five, six, seven kids, you're having 50, 60, 70 kids. And then you multiply that in that time period. So I think it's safe to say that at the time of Noah's uh, uh, grace being found in the eyes of the Lord, there were billions of people on the earth and at the bare minimum, hundreds and hundreds of millions, okay? And so we're just looking at what we see the population is today, how the population has grown over time. And again, I'm just taking some very bare bone numbers, but I, but I did like search this up. You know, I searched up how many people lived at the time of the flood, right? What was the population like? And people were saying it's like today. It'd be like what you have today, if not more, you know? And so we see here that, uh, look, it, it could have been, you know, 4 billion or more. And, and that is from Bible scholars that aren't doing backwards math. Okay. So for the sake of the episode, I'm going to move right along here. And the point I'm getting at, and the reason why I spent time on this is that, look, Noah found this unmerited favor of God. And think about this. He was the only one that believed. We know that we're justified by faith. Noah believed God so much that he spent a century building that massive ark, okay? Think about that. Some people, you, you might believe in something for an hour or a few minutes, maybe a day, maybe a month, you know, maybe a year. Noah spent a hundred years, give or take, building that massive, massive ship, that ark, amen, so that when the flood came, he would be saved and his family would be saved, amen? That is a picture of obedience, not perfection, amen? We know that Noah wasn't perfect. You can read about after the flood. He's not perfect, amen? Yet, he was obedient and he was faithful. And this is what's scary, there were billions of people laughing at him, living their lives, going about their lives. Look at today. The Bible tells us that the coming of the Lord is like the flood times. People are buying and selling, getting married, giving to marriage, you know, all these things. They're just doing, they're going about their business. And so what we see is that though the Lord flooded the earth and though it was repopulated through Noah and his family, yet we're still in the same predicament where man is walking around with rank unbelief despite us having this clear knowledge that God wiped out billions of people and saved the one that believed. Amen. That's absolutely incredible to think about. That's profound. And we will get to more of this as we get to the next episode and we'll get more to the grace topic. So tune in next time. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. God bless and amen. Thanks for spending time with us today at the cafe. We would love to hear from you. You can email Brother Clark directly at clark at enduringpromise.org. See you again tomorrow. 
Same time, same place.